Child Labor, published in the Club Member, December 1907. The law prohibiting the employment of children under the age of 14 years, otherwise known as the Child Labor Law, is one of the really important laws that has been enacted by our legislator, not only in the interest of labor and our youthful wage earners, but in the interest of civilization and humanity and our future generations. In reviewing the far-reaching effects of the operation of this law in this state, we are immediately brought into the connection with the operation of the compulsory attendance school law and the truancy law, which measures must necessarily go hand in hand to secure the best results in the child labor problem. In the enforcement of the state factory inspection law, the commissioner, who up to this time has been the only member of the bureau clothed with the factory inspection authority, has found it most difficult on account of the very limited force and the multitudinous duties devolving upon him to give his personal attention and presence to this important work. He has therefore made an inspection of the more important factories, packing houses, and other large industries employing a large number of workers while carrying out the general scope of the work coming under such factory inspection and child labor laws. A large number of recommendations for improvements have been made and complied with, thus securing to factory employees better industrial conditions under which to labor and greater protection from machinery and unsanitary conditions. One of the duties of the inspector is the examination of child labor in the inspection of certificates filed and verification by school records, etc. In the child labor law, the state assumes the right and duty of protecting, as far possible, the life, health, and welfare of the children wage earners in factories, packing houses, and mines against oppressive indifferent employers. It prohibits the employment in factories, packing houses, and mines of persons under 14 years of age and regulates the employment in other occupations at places dangerous to life, limb, health, or morals of persons under 16 years of age. The effect of the child labor law in connection with the truancy law showed an increase in school attendance to the extent of 500 pupils in Kansas City, Kansas in 1906. It has been urged by many superintendents of county and city schools that the law be amended so as to include mercantile employment and messenger service as well as factory service. The following list of important manufacturing companies shows the number of boys taken out of employment in factories in various counties by reason of the prohibition employment under the child labor law. Bourbon, 450. Cherokee, 70. Cowley, 100. Crawford, 100. Douglas, 35. Franklin, 70. Labette, 25. Leavenworth, 150. Leon, 10. Montgomery, 50. Neosho, 20. Sedgwick, 276. Shawnee, 50. Wilson, 45. And Wyandot, 500. Thus, it will be seen in above counties, 1,951 children have been taken out of factories and placed in school by virtue of the child labor law. In addition to this, or rather in connection with the operation of the child labor law, the various county reports to the state superintendent show that the operation of the truancy law, the compulsory education law, and the child labor law has taken from all sources and placed in school about 5,000 children that otherwise would not have attended school. In a recent publication on the subject Child Labor Legislation, the American Academy of Political and Social Science have given some very interesting valuable data on the subject of child labor legislation in the various states which will show that Kansas is not alone in the laudable humane effort to secure protection to the great army of youth laborers whose lives and futures depend so much on the legal restraints and protection that can be given by the legislative machinery of the several states. A search through the statutes of various states shows that the age below which child labor is prohibited varies from 16 to 10 years. Nine states prohibit employment under 14 years of age in stores, factories, and one or more of the following places of employment, offices, laundries, hotels, theaters, bowling alleys, and bakeries. 
eight states prohibit employment in stores and factories, while 12 limit their prohibition to factories only. 22 states prohibit employment of children under 14 in mines. 11 states prohibit employment in messenger service under 14 years, with certain exceptions in vacation, one state, Maryland, under 12 years. Washington and Wisconsin prohibit employment of girls under 18 in messenger service. Maine, New Hampshire, and Vermont are the only remaining northern states which keep an age limit in vacation. The importance of this lies in the fact that all three states have cotton mills employing children. Nebraska is the last northern state to keep the 10-year age limit in vacation. The District of Columbia, Nevada, and five territories have no age limit. The New York legislative session, lately come to a close, was one of unusual interest in the matter of labor legislation. On one of the first days, the page 8 hour bill was introduced, prohibiting all children under 16 of age working more than 8 hours per day in factories in the state of New York. The especially valuable feature of the law which distinguishes it from any other child labor law in this country is the requirement that these 8 hours must fall between 8 a.m. and 5 p.m. In future, factory inspectors will not have to discover how many hours a child has been at work in any factory, but its mere presence there before 8 in the morning and after 5 in the afternoon will in itself be a violation. Mrs. John Van Vorst has written a most interesting series of papers on the conditions in Georgia and Alabama, which are published in the Saturday Evening Post called The Cry of Children or Human Documents in the Case of the New Slavery. She personally visited the great cotton factories and the homes and found conditions most revolting. Though the age limit in those states is 12 years, she found children working as young as 7, 9, and one little waif of 5. The children work 12 hours and 5 minutes per day. In 34 states and territories, there is no limit whatever to set the number of hours which an employer can force his employees to work for him. I suggest right here that the Women's Federation of Clubs ask that a bill be introduced at the next session of the Kansas Legislature asking for a law like that of New York regulating the hours of child labor. The employers naturally, of course, fight reform to the bitter end. In the mill villages, the corporations own the land, the buildings on it, the school, the church, and the corporation practically makes the only laws applied and applies them itself according to its fantasy. The nature of this corporation is no way different from that of the feudal baron, and were it not for the American love of freedom and the spirit of independence shown on the part of the laborers, the abuses perpetrated in the corporation villages would resemble nothing so much as the oppression of the people by the grand seigneurs of the Middle Ages, which brought about the reign of terror or the great revolution.